Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about the eradication of the H. pylori bacteria. These are bacteria that can live even in your acidic stomach. It causes peptic ulcer disease and it can increase your risk of many cancers. So what's the problem with H. pylori? Many problems, including peptic ulcer disease. What exactly is this? Too much acid relative to your protective mechanisms. The acid is winning and your beautiful mucous membrane that's lining your gut is losing. So how can we manage this? Decrease the stomach acid or improve the mucus protection? If we achieve this, what's gonna happen? You will decrease the risk of erosions, which will decrease the risk of ulcers, which will decrease the risk of bleeding, and will decrease the risk of perforation, internal bleeding, and death. Less ulcers, less risk of Barrett's esophagus, and less risk of esophageal adenocarcinoma. What are the options to treat peptic ulcer disease? H2 blockers, proton pump inhibitors, prostaglandin analogs, antacid cytoprotectives. Some of these methods are trying to lower the acid, others are trying to boost the mucus, such as the cytoprotectives and the prostaglandin analogs. What's the number one cause of peptic ulcer disease? Is it uh, spicy food, mint, chocolate? Shut up. Shut the French toast up. The most common cause is H. pylori, the bacteria, baby. Which one is more common, gastric ulcer in your stomach or duodenal ulcer in your duodenum? The answer is duodenal ulcer. Question number three. What is a common cause of an underdiagnosed cause of acute abdomen found in autopsy? Oh, so you mean like uh, the acute abdomen killed the patient? That's true. The answer is a perforated peptic ulcer disease. It is hard to diagnose and most doctors are doofuses. Question number four. If a patient has a peptic ulcer disease, is he or she more likely to have diarrhea or constipation? And the answer is diarrhea. Why? Because peptic ulcer disease can bleed and blood is cathartic. Cathartic means diarrhea causing. Question number five. If a patient has an acute abdomen and syncope, What's your differential? This could be a perforated peptic ulcer disease. It could be acute pancreatitis. It could be a ruptured aortic aneurysm or a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Which one is never malignant? Is it the gastric ulcer or the duodenal ulcer? The duodenal ulcer is almost never malignant. Therefore, there is no need to biopsy. Listen to the patient carefully. If you listen carefully, if you ask the right questions, most patients will diagnose themselves. Patient number one, doctor, when I eat, the pain gets really bad, especially at night, especially when I lie flat on bed or when I wear tight clothing. This is probably an ulcer in the stomach or the lower esophagus. Doctor, when I eat dinner at 8 p.m., I'm perfect, the pain is gone. And then I go to sleep. I will wake up at midnight because of severe pain. This is duodenal ulcer. So the pain of gastric ulcer gets worse when you eat. However, the pain of duodenal ulcer will improve when you eat. Why? Because when you eat, you close your pyloric sphincter, leaving all of the acid in the stomach. The duodenum is acid-free and food-free and friction-free, so the duodenal ulcer gets better when you eat. Three to four hours later, when the sphincter opens and the food and the acid and everything is in the duodenum, it's gonna hurt. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Let's talk about the H. pylori, microbiology, baby. Check out my playlist called microbiology. I have another playlist called Picmonic. What does microbiology mean? Micro means small bio, life, ology, the study of. It's the study of small life. It's the study of bacteria, fungi, viruses, or parasites. Technically, parasites are not in microbiology because some of them are so big, they are not micro. This lovely science is divided into bacteriology, fungology, or mycology, virology, and parasitology. Let's talk about you bacteria. By using the gram stain, the G has to be capital, uppercase G, because this is a name of a scientist. Have some respect. Gram positive, the bacteria appear purple under the microscope using the gram stain, or gram negative, they appear pink. And each one is subdivided into cocci or rods, cocci or rods. Where does the freaking H. pylori fit? It's a gram negative rod or a gram negative bacillus. There are a great story about two Australian scientists that discovered the H. pylori. They announced to the world that they have discovered a bacterium in the stomach. It looked very similar to Campylobacter, another gram-negative rod, so they call it 
Campylobacter pyloridis and then renamed it into Campylobacter pylori and then they discovered it's not a Campylobacter so they added a new name Helicobacter pylori. Why helico? Because it's curved. Why pylori? Because it's in the stomach near the pyloric sphincter. Okay medicosis, so when the two scientists Marshall and Warren discovered H. pylori, they were treated with respect, right? Ha <laughs> ha, wrong. They were mocked. Other doofus scientists claim, oh, bacteria cannot live in a pH of 1 to 2. Bacteria cannot live in an acidic environment. No bacteria can live in your stomach. These two scientists are crazy. Many other scientists were mocked before being proven right. Example, René Lenick, who discovered the stethoscope. Max Planck, the Wright brothers. Louis Pasteur, Joseph Lester. Sir Thomas Bayes was shellacked for three centuries until scientists finally discovered that he was a freaking genius. Many of the so-called experts need to get their heads out of their sphincter. Inertia is a great force indeed. H. pylori is associated with gastritis, peptic ulcer disease, gastric adenocarcinoma, and malt lymphoma, mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue lymphoma, which is a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So how can we get rid of the stinking bacteria? Basically, you have two regimens. The first regimen is called Oclam, the second is called OBMT. Oclam one is a triple therapy, three medications. The OBMT is a quadruple therapy, four medications. Let's go. What is the Oclam? What is the O? Omeprazole. What is the CL? Clarithromycin. What's the AM? Amoxicillin. So you have one proton pump inhibitor and two antibiotics. And you give these for 14 days. And then you recheck for eradication. Make sure to tell the patient to take every single dose on time. If you mess up with the regimen, H. pylori can become resistant. It's a stinking bacteria. The other option is OBMT. What's the O? Omeprazole. What's the B? Bismuth. What's the M? Metronidazole. What's the T? Tetracycline. Also for 14 days. A third regimen is called levofloxacin triple therapy. You have a proton pump inhibitor such as omeprazole. You have two antibiotics, levofloxacin and amoxicillin, also for 14 days, and then you recheck. But hemodicosis, should I go with Oclam or should I go with OBMT? You ask the patient. Hey patient, have you ever taken a macrolide before? Have you ever taken erythromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin before? If the answer is yes, they are probably resistant to it, so don't give this, you go with the OBMT. But if the patient said, no doctor, I do not recall taking any macrolide before, then it's time to give them macrolide now. So, if you have never taken macrolides, I'm gonna give you macrolides. If you have taken macrolides before, you're probably resistant to them, I'm gonna give you something that does not have macrolides. Got it? Okay. Let's review H. pylori from Picmonic. Helicobacter pylori, here is the helicopter. It's a gram negative, here is the devil. It's a bacillus, here is the rod. It is curved, that's why we call it helico. Look at this curve, beautiful. It has a polar flagellum. It is catalase positive, the positive cat. Oxidase positive, the positive oxidase. It can cause gastric ulcers, duodenal ulcers. It secretes urease, which converts urea into ammonia. Ammonia is basic. It's going to try to raise the pH in the stomach. H. pylori can increase your risk of gastric adenocarcinoma and malt lymphoma. Here is the lime foam. How can we diagnose it? You can check my blood for IgG. Here is the gold goblin, gold for IgG. You can check for part of the bacteria in your stool. And this is called the stool antigen test. A funny way of saying it is we're looking for the poop of the H. pylori inside the patient's poop. Since this bacteria has urease, we can check for the urease in your breath, called the urease breath test. Or we can biopsy the ulcer in the stomach or the duodenum. How do you eradicate it? Two antibiotics plus a proton pump inhibitor. This is the Oclam regimen. You have omeprazole, clarithromycin, amoxicillin for 14 days. If you want to learn more about the treatment of peptic ulcer disease, check out my Uraquate Pharmacology course. You will also learn about cyclic AMP, serotonin, histamine, etc. To learn more about antibiotics, I have an antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. And for a limited time, you can get a 25% discount towards anything on my website. Just use promo code SAFE25. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Go to Picmonic for animated medical mnemonics. Thank you for watching as always. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.